welcome to everyone as you're hopping on today. Hope you are having a great, great Friday. We are growing. You are growing. You are receiving knowledge and understanding in order to apply in your life. I'm just speaking it over your life today. You have the power within you, God. The Holy Spirit abides on the inside of you. And um, it's my prayer that you are you are breaking generational curses and establishing generational blessings. In the name of Jesus, you are breaking generational curses and establishing generational blessings. That is my prayer for you today. All right. So we we are we're on a journey of healing. As always, I like to review for those that may be on here for the very first time. The very first thing we talked about was the confession, was confession. How important it is for us to confess that we have been hurt. Confess the hurt. Get it out. Confess it to God. This is what hurt me. This is how I was hurt by so and so. Um, you know, all of the above. This is, I, I'm just, I was hurting because of this. Uh, regardless of how long ago it was, regardless of whether it was, um, you know, years ago or yesterday, Father, I was hurt by this. Second confession is you go to someone and you are, what? You are confessing to them. This is someone you trust. You know, this is what really hurt me growing up. This is what uh, uh, has hurt me in past years, the betrayal, the whatever it was. So confession was number one. Number two, we started talking about forgiveness. And obviously there are times when we may need to go to the person that has that has hurt us um, and just release them. Just release them. It, you know, it's just forgiveness. Father, I'm choosing to forgive. We went over a couple weeks of forgiveness. Uh, the importance of, of God, of, of understanding first and foremost, first and foremost, how much God has forgiven you. Right. Because as we understand how much God has forgiven us, then it opens up our heart to have more compassion to forgive other people because uh, we, we we were sinners and yet somebody else sinned against you. So then, of course, you want to forgive them. So confession and forgiveness. We did go a little bit into deliverance as well, talking about deliverance, because we want to be able to identify if there was any type of spiritual oppression or a spiritual obsession or obsession that came from that came from what that hurt that trauma we want to be able to recognize that and deal with that in a spiritual way so we talked a little bit about two or three days about deliverance all right and identifying that so yesterday we started with Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 it says this brethren I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but listen to this, this is the point, but one thing I do, here's what I wanna ask of you today, and I've asked of you over the last two days, this one thing, this one thing uh, that I believe, most importantly, not even me, most importantly, that, the, that, that your heavenly Father is asking of you, here's the one thing, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. OK, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Listen, if there's anything that the enemy would would have you to do is, number one, he wants to condemn you or make you feel guilty about stuff. But number two, he wants to keep you focused on the past. Things, listen, things that you literally you literally cannot go back and change. There is nothing you can do about yesterday absolutely nothing you can do about yesterday. Uh, so if you can't do anything about yesterday, you definitely can't do anything about 10 years ago. You definitely can't do anything about 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 50 years ago for some of us, right? Can't do anything about it. So what Paul said is this, I'm going to forget what lies behind. In other words, I'm releasing it. You know, there are going to be times when you're going to have, the memory is going to come up. Something's going to jog your memory about something that happens, but I'm releasing, I'm releasing my past. I, I'm, I, there's nothing I can do about it, but what I, what I can control, what I can control is my present 
in order to affect my future. I can control my present and I can focus in on my future, right? Let me say that one more time. I can, I, that's all you can control is today. You cannot, you cannot do anything about yesterday. Tomorrow's not even here yet. So today is the day of decision. Today is the day when you make the right decisions, when you choose to make the right decisions, to do the right things in order to lay the groundwork for tomorrow. And then, then, then tomorrow comes and you choose, you make the, see, listen to this. L life, life is all about the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis or the choices that we, we negate to make uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. One year from now, if the Lord tarries, right? Jesus doesn't come back a year from now. You are breathing one year from now. It's going to come. April 1st, 2023 is going to come. If those things don't transfer, if nothing happens to you, if the Lord doesn't come back, April 1st, 2023 is going to come. The question is, is what, what condition will you be in? Who, who will you be one year from now? What, ha, what will you have established in your life, changed in your life one year from now? Well, here is how we, how we make that decision. Between April 1st today and March 31st of next year, it's, decisions that you, it's the decisions that you make that will establish what happens April 1st of 2023. Every day, making good quality, quality, excuse me, godly decisions, right? Choices, choices. You can choose to do some of the things that we're talking about, or you can choose not to do it. Uh, ultimately, you can choose to do something different and have some different results by next year th today, or you can choose to do the same thing that you've always done and be exactly where you are a year from today, where you are today. It's really, it's really what it comes down to. It's, that's really what it comes down to. So we're talking about letting the past go. The first thing is letting the past go. The second thing is, listen, I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead. God has purpose for you. He has things for you to do. It is there for you. But listen, it also has to do with your choices. It is a, it's a, it's a teamwork. It's teamwork. You and God working together. He has already established that, hey, Tova, uh, Stephanie, I, 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 have, I have some good plans for you, his, his word says. I got some, Stephanie, I got some good plans for you, but I need you to make the choices, the right choices each and every day so that you can walk into those plans. Tova, I need you to do that. I like calling your names out sometimes. Christopher, I need you to do that. I need you to do that, bro. I need you to make the right choices, but I, I have good plans that, that have been established already before the creation of this world for you, but I need you to make some right, make the right choices to get there. So what are some of those choices that we're talking about? Well, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. We're all busy, but there's a good busyness and a bad, a bad busyness. So let's talk about the good busyness. Number one, we talked about establishing priorities in your life. What are your life priorities? I'm not talking, I'm talking about your life priorities. What is your life going to be um, established on? The priorities your life is going to be established on for the rest of your life. What matters the most to you? What matters, the, let, let me ask it, uh, even a, 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 an equally important question. What matters to God for you? What matters to God for you? What are God's priorities for you? right? Yesterday, I shared a little bit of mine, and I, I think I'll take just a moment again. It was just three things. That's my first three priorities of my, of my seven, restoration and relationship with God for eternity, making sure that, I'm, that I am focused. Listen, I'm looking ahead, all right? You're looking ahead. I want, I want to live eternally with, with the Lord. Number two was to become the person God created me to be. Number three, was a marriage based on happy, a happy marriage based on God's word. Those were my first three priorities. 
So everything, so yesterday I talked about then establishing the purpose, why you, those are your priorities. In other words, why does that matter to you? What's the reason? What's your purpose behind it? Because your purpose behind it is what's going to be the fuel for you to keep going forward. So you have to have a purpose for each one of your priorities. You need to have a purpose for each one of your priorities, the why as to what you're doing. Why am I doing it? It has it has to be a good a good godly purpose behind it. Well, I'm just doing this for me. Nope, that's not that's not going to carry you. I'm telling you, it won't carry you through. It's got to be something that 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 involves all of you and something that involves serving other people, um, something that involves family, because it's something about when we're, we're, when we're born again, it's something about how God recreated us. It's not just for us anymore, okay? Today, today, the third step, and this is it, priorities, purpose. Number three, having a plan. What is the plan? Now, this may take a little time, right? This may take a little time uh, in prayer and 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 strategy and thinking. So don't don't let these questions go. You know, don't go over the weekend and by Monday you forget all about your purpose and excuse me, you forget all about your priorities and your purpose. No, this is your life plan that we're sculpting. Why? Because we're forgetting about the past. The past is no longer going to affect us. We're reaching we're we're reaching forward to our future. So. What is the plan? What is the plan for, for, for restoration and re, in relationship with God for eternity? What is my action plan? What is my action? Well, here's something that I wrote down, that I'm going to have time with the Lord every day in prayer, in the Bible, and in meditating or thinking about what I read in the Bible and how it applies to me, right? And then number two, a, I, I'm going to have a commitment to, obe to obeying God's word and God's leading by the Holy Spirit. That's my, that's, those are my simple action steps for the development of my relationship with God and having eternal life with him, right? And it doesn't have to be real, real deep, y'all. It doesn't have to be something real deep. If, if, if your priority, one of your priorities might be your health. This is a priority of mine. My, uh, you, I'm speaking as you now. This is my priority, listen. I, I'm going to get my, my physical health in place. This is a life priority for me. Okay, what is the purpose behind it? Well, the purpose is, number one, I'm the temple of God. God lives in me. I want God to have a, this, notice, notice the purpose. I want God to have a, a healthy body to abide in as he leads me, right? Um, here's another purpose. Um, I, I, want to, I want to be healthy to be able to fulfill my purpose in life. I want to be healthy for my family. See, and, and then you know what? Down, down, down at the bottom, it may be, I just want to look good too. And nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But if your per your purpose has to be more than just something that's about yourself, right? Your purpose has to be, it has to be bigger than you, because that's what's going to drive you. And then your plan of action may be for a healthy, okay. I'm going to take this one step at a time. I'm going to stop eating fast food. That may be step one of your plan. I'm going to stop eating fast food. I'm going to I'm going to pack my lunch. Um, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to think of stuff off the top of my head. But I'm going to stop eating fast food. Then you may go to okay. Now I'm going to focus in on um, you know making sure I'm not eating sweets. So I'm doing away with some stuff. I'm not going to buy that stuff when I go to the grocery store. I just want to give you an example of how to, with one of your priorities, then what you're going to do is have a purpose behind it. Then you're going to have a plan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got to carry out the plan every day, right? And this is what, these are a couple of scriptures before we leave. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. What is that word? What is that Bible? What is that word saying? Listen, these purposes, I keep saying that first, these uh, priorities, purposes, and plans, Father, I'm committing them to you. Uh, this is what I believe means the most to me. And I, and I believe it means the most to me because it means the most to you. I'm committing 
these, these uh, priorities in my life to you. And then it says, and your plans will be established. When you commit something to the Lord, when you say, Lord, I'm doing this because it means something to you too, then you better believe he's going to be helping you. He's going to give you some direction. He's going to give you some plans. As a matter of fact, a couple of verses on Proverbs 16, 9, we said Proverbs 16, 3, and then Proverbs 16, 9, the mind of a man plans his ways. That's what we're talking about, plans, but the Lord directs his steps. So you're going to have a plan laid out, but now every day it's you and God. It's you and God. There are going to be times, going back to my illustration, my example, there are going to be times when you say, dang, on it. I didn't make my lunch. I need to run out and, and um, uh, get me some McDonald's. And then the Lord's going to say, or you could run over to Kroger or the grocery store and make you a salad and buy a salad. Uh-oh, he's, he's guiding you now. He's, 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 he's talking to you. You might've thought that was just an idea. No, he's now directing your steps. And now once he directs your steps and says, you say McDonald's, and he says, no, a salad. Now, right here, right here is where you make the choice. Remember we talked about a year from now, where you will be? It is your choice, except it's crazy because, and I'm, I'm just about finished. It's one choice at a time. One choice today, another choice tomorrow, another choice, and you'll turn around in a year from now, you are, you're looking at yourself like, how did I get here? One choice, one right choice at a time. One right choice at a time as you're being guided and led by the Holy Spirit, as you have a plan, as you have purposes, as you set your priorities. Here's what this is going to do about your past hurts, because you're probably wondering, what does all this have to do with our past hurts? Listen, when you start seeing, ah, uh, how do we say this, Lord? When you start seeing who you really are as you're obtaining, making the right choices, attaining what God has for you in the future, going after that. As you begin to see who you really are, I'm telling you what it does is it, it there's a healing that comes from who you thought you used to be because of what happened to you in your life. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. Help me, help me, Lord. When you begin to see how God is directing your steps and how the grace of God, the anointing of God, the power of God is within you to make the right choices, then what it's going to do is, here, yes, thank you, Lord. It's going to begin to develop within you a new image of who you think you are. You're going to begin to see, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not a um, victim of my past. No. I'm a victor. I'm going forward. I'm victorious. I'm not just a victim of my past. You know, I, I'm, I'm just, I am who I am because of all the hurts and the, and the, and the uh, trauma of my past. No, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward with God. I'm moving forward with my priorities, purposes, plans. I'm making the right decisions now. And I'm seeing that I am, a, I am much greater in Christ than who I thought I was in the past. And now you are beginning to see that now the healing comes. You're, 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 you're outgrowing who you used to be. That's what, that's why we're focused forward now. Yeah, we dealt with the past. Yeah, we, we were hurt. Yes, we were. We confessed it. We're forgiven. But now we're going forward now. It's, and I left off yesterday saying that it's your day. It's your, it's, this, this is, this is it. This is, this is your life. You are choosing, how, how, what's the old uh, adage? Oh, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Who you become and what you do is predicated on you making the decision today, I'm going forward. 
And then tomorrow when you wake up, you're going to keep saying this. I'm going to keep going forward. Then Sunday you're going to wake up. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm not going back. I'm not going back up here. I'm moving forward up here and in and throughout my entire life. All right. So I hope that that helps you. Uh, priorities, purposes, plans. Take some time uh, over the weekend. If you have not began this exercise, take some time over the weekend uh, have some quiet time for yourself. You deserve this. You are the most. You, you are the greatest gift that God has given you, right? So you deserve this. Go forward. Uh, uh, take this exercise seriously, and then allow God to be a teammate with you and see where He takes you. All righty. Uh, this Sunday we are going to uh, continue on the power to get wealth. Join us this Sunday, 11 a.m. For service, uh, if you're not uh, going to your own church, come on uh, out in person if you're able to or watch us here on Facebook, 11 a.m. on Sunday. God bless you. Love you. Have a great weekend. And I will see you on Sunday and if not, on next Tuesday. Bye-bye.